The Maine Legislature is back at work in the State House for the first time in 14 months. Good evening, I'm Pat Callahan. And I'm Amanda Hill in for Cindy Williams. With just about two weeks left in the scheduled session, lawmakers have a lot of work to get done. And no surprise, in the year since COVID, this first day back was interrupted by controversy. New Center Maine's Don Carrigan is live at the State House now with that story. Don? Hi, Pat and Amanda. This should have been a day for celebrating here at the State House, but not quite because even though COVID appears to be on its way out, it still has the ability to make things difficult. Mask protesters showed up at the State House and brought their goats, a metaphor perhaps for the headbutting about to happen inside. For lawmakers, lobbyists, and all kinds of activists, returning to the State House is a big deal. And being back in this building and seeing uh, all of you in this chamber for the first time in this 130th. But Speaker of the House Ryan Fecto also laid down the law. The special rules require everyone in the building to wear masks or other face coverings. The chair would ask the member to comply with the policy. But Representative John Andrews, a libertarian, said he would not. I'm following the CDC guidance, and I'm in compliance with that. I will be civilly disobeying today. Andrew's refusal wasn't a surprise. He had joined six Republicans for a mask protest last week. Speaker Fecto ordered an extremely rare meeting of the House Ethics Committee to deal with it. I am a fully vaccinated person in compliance with the governor and CDC guidelines. Andrew said it was a matter of principle for him, a line in the sand. For the past 14 to 15 months, I've heard from constituents and they want me to hold the line and demand our normal back. The Ethics Committee members said the legislature has the right to set its own rules, including face coverings. Finally, they and Andrews agreed he would leave his seat empty for the rest of the week and not be able to vote. He can walk into the chamber now if he wants to. He just has to obey the rules. I have to wear a tie. I can't chew gum. There are a lot of things that add to the decorum of the chamber that are much less uh, in, ev invasive than just wearing a mask. Andrew said his position is not likely to change. Somebody had to stand up and be counted. There's tens of thousands, probably even hundreds of thousands of people that agree with me that say enough is enough. House Republican leader Dillingham said her members are also angry about the mask mandate. It's just doesn't make any sense. It's not based on science and so it's frustrating. But she said GOP members agreed to follow the rules so they can all be there to vote on the many issues still waiting to be decided. Those include hundreds of millions of dollars in new state spending, new borrowing, and that public power proposal, among many others. They have roughly two weeks to get it all done. And Pat and Amanda, Representative Dillingham made a point to me today that I've also heard other legislators from both parties mention because they have met in session so few times in person and everything else has been done by Zoom, a lot of these legislators really don't know each other very well. And that uh, may tend to lead towards more partisanship. The new legislative directory, a book of photos listing all the legislatures in it, just came out this week. And for a lot of these lawmakers, maybe the first time, they actually see what the others look like. Pat and Amanda, back to you.